G'day, welcome to Market Sam After Work. Today I want to do a video on rifling, um, in particular discussing 5R rifling because of questions I've been asked down that road, um, but about rifling. So the, for want of a better word, the thread that's on the inside of your barrel, which is there, the, the lands at a twist to, in part, twist to a projectile when you fire it, which is what a rifle, why a rifle is called a rifle is because of the rifling, which are those lands down the middle of your barrel. Um, and the 5R side of it, well listen, 5R um, is, well, it's a real thing, it came from a real place, it now really is more a marketing ploy, a marketing term, um, to say good rifling, I suppose it's used and some people focus on the 5R being important. Um, and I suppose I want a general conversation to explain that a little bit to to the people who are asking that sort of question. Um, a lot of the, a lot of shooters, a lot of people already know, already made their mind up, all that sort of stuff. I get it, but this is for the people who don't know that. Um, and I suppose I would qualify my stance on on five R rifling, or actually any rifling, is I've never fussed too much about it. I want a set twist, I want a good barrel, and that's sort of where I leave it generally. Um, I'm not one that cleans thoroughly. I tend to leave a, a barrel um, and the rifling in a foul running form. Light clean is all I do, um, and a good barrel is a good barrel, and that's largely most of them. Um, and you get the occasional um, bad barrel, and that's a bad barrel. Rifling never comes into it much for me. But okay, the information as to what rifling is. Um, yes, 5R is a real thing. It came, and I've read briefly on that, there's a guy which was called Boots, referred to as Boots, um, who came up with the 5R rifling. In his own words, he didn't invent it, but he was, from what I've read, working with some Russian powder development and doing some testing and that side of things. He was using some Russian barrels um, and loads and bits and pieces like that. And there was a profile in there he liked um, or it tested pretty well for what he was doing. Um, it was actually in four groove, I think. I'm not sure exactly that bit, but he decided to do it in five groove. Um, and that was something that he had found worked better for him. Um, and hence that was 5R. And then not too long after that, he started to use it, sell it, um, got orders that were larger than he could do. And then Krieger Barrels was the people that I read at least, took it over and took it on. And then that, from that point, the 5R was designated and that's where it came from. So Russia, Russian is what the R denotes, five is the amount of grooves. That was the, where the name came from. So that's 5R rifling. Um, and I suppose I've heard it referenced in all sorts of things like five, the, the five R is different because the most common is six and this is five and, and the uneven side of things. And I'll explain a little bit more uneven to even um, amount of lands, which the, I suppose another little piece of information I'll throw in there is talking to our barrel um, builders and manufacturers that I have connections with talking to them. I've sort of found out things like back in the day, years ago, whether this was 50 years ago or 70 years ago or wherever, the common thing of the European or the, the British, the UK um, rifle makers, they felt that uneven grooves were better. So three, five, seven was what they did things in. Um, over in the US, I think it was, but it was in the, in the other side of the world, um, they, were, they were even back in those days. So they would go with the four, six, eight sort of stuff. So four and six was more common. But truthfully now, it's all over the place. Um, and like I said, I'll get into that stuff a little bit later on. But the truth of it is the saying six is the most common rifling. No, that's not the case at all. Um, there is three, four, five, six, seven, um, even going into micro grooves is another thing. There's the, the polygonal, uh, there's ratchet rifling. All these things are the different way they do the lands um, in different barrels and, and um, different manufacturers, all been tested over the years. And I suppose that's where I would come into in a little bit in reference to 5R rifling. Um, it's put into the fact that it's better rifling because it seals the bore better, the bullet seals better to it. The, um, it takes less to clean. Um, it's just, there's five, so there's the, the opposing side of things, which what, I, what they're actually talking about there is the logic of a land on either side is squeezing the center of the bullet. Um, and uh, by having a open, by having uneven means that one side is pushing and it lets the bullet distort without, without um, deforming the bullet because there's room to move. 
Um, the truth of it is that isn't the case. That isn't actually how it works. Um, even in a hard bullet, the, the distortion will happen. Um, the, the lands uh, cut grooves or the, yeah, the, the, the um, rifling will cut grooves into the bullet, push grooves into the bullet without pushing the whole centre across. A more relevant thing that actually happened, and this is where the five did come into play, um, was actually, and I actually spoke to a good barrel builder over here, which is Neville from Medco, and he was going through something which he developed a long, long time ago, which was actually in dealing with the older military ammunition. So harder copper, harder um, lead, and he did some testing. Uh, there were some rifles back then that used to shoot those it was the beginning of getting into mat shooting and things like that, and people were using surplus um, military ammunition. It was hard to get back there, all that sort of stuff, um, after one of the wars type thing, but getting more into using a lot of um, surplus ammunition. Um, and he found back then in testing, everyone had found actually, that good barrel makers didn't shoot this ammunition very well. But back then they were largely using six screws. That's a long time ago, but they're using six screws. And there were some rifles that were working well that were only four grooves. Um, and what he went up with, he went and tested this and, and realized that he, he was tooled up to do six screws um, and found that he couldn't make his barrels shoot those bullets as well. Four grooves was working well and his logic was, wait a minute, is it the number of grooves? So what he could do easily in his tooling was turn it from six grooves to top out half of them and turn it to three grooves in similar, with the similar tooling without having to retool too much. Um, that was three grooves that shot even better. And for a little while there, that worked, it worked really well. For a little while there, those barrels, those three groove barrels were winning competitions. They were doing stuff all over the world, winning competitions. And it was actually about, the, it, it wasn't about the particular number, it was about less grooves. With the really hard projectiles, the really hard copper, the really hard projectiles, they were being deformed by having to cut through too many lands. And less lands, be it four, be it three, improved them, made them better. Um, and there's still some logic that carries forward today of where the three grooves, those less lands, that less deformation to the bullet, the better. Um, and you'll get better barrels out of that logic. And that's much more logical than that opposed thing. Um, like I said, by, by the opposing lands, um, really, no, the bullet can deal with that sort of stuff. And I suppose this is actually where I'd head to to explain a little bit more about the 5R side of things. Um, the truth of it is from the get-go, from a long, long time ago, let's not say, I don't know when it actually happened, but from a long, long time ago, both barrel makers and projectile makers, manufacturers, both so on both sides of things, have been flat out down the road of trying to work out how to get that bullet spinning at very high RPM um, with as little damage to the projectile as possible. They want that bullet to travel as smoothly and cleanly down that barrel the projectile to sm travel smoothly and cleanly down that barrel with as little deformation as possible. They've all been working at the same thing. So they may take years to improve things, all that sort of stuff has been developing over the years and hence all those different types of um, rifling exist and have existed. Some uh, you won't find anymore, some will still find, but they really truly, what it's come down to is the, the standard rifling that you get is very good. That's why we don't find any real differences. So the 5R side of things, having a slightly less angle, going from its, its, its angle is actually uh, uh, 60 degrees, where normal rifling is 30 degrees on the, the angles on the sides of the lands. Um, yes, there's some sound logic to less angle, meaning that it, um, there's less to fill up in, in with um, fouling and that side of things. The truth of it is, once the barrels run in and some foulings in there, there's very little difference. I think there would be potentially a little bit easy cleaning with those with those lower angles like the 5R, but truthfully, <laughs> there's lots of manufacturers that have gone down the same road, not exactly those angles, but they've moved things around to get them to clean as well as they can, to get them to be as efficient as they can. Like I said, they've all been on that job and the bullet manufacturers are working with what's there in the way of barrels as well. So really, I suppose where I come down to is my, my advice on this thing would come simply into the fact that it's not something I fuss about, it's not something you need to fuss about. If you really like them because they've really worked well for you, then I get it, you know, for sure. Stick with that, do that side of things, carry on down what works for you. But the truth of it is for the people who are, hang on, they don't wanna buy that barrel because it doesn't have the 5R rifling. 
or they need to buy a different rifle because they need to get the 5 hour rifling. Um, it's, it's not worth fussing about. There really isn't anything in it in, in, in anywhere. If you go heavily into what the barrel manufacturers, the custom barrel manufacturers, the top end shooters, that sort of stuff, you'll find some that have particular things they'll say are better. But in most cases, the guys have really been there and been there with the rubber on the road and done enough testing with it. They'll come up with very similar things. A good barrel is a good barrel. They shoot well. It's much more about the individual barrel, not the, not the particular rifle, the individual barrel, some are better than others, but really, generally, they're all about the same place and it doesn't matter what it is. I would follow the manufacturer's recommendations. There is some logic to less um, lands per, for smaller bullets and more lands for larger bullets. Doesn't always need to be there and trust in the fact that they have tried this and proven this and the only reason they have it for sale is that it works and it works well. Um, and I suppose uh, that also moves quickly into the style of rifling. Um, and when I say that, you've got cut rifling, you've got button rifling, and you've got hammer forged rifling, um, the, or barrels. The, the truth of it is uh, the cut rifling is the most flexible. Um, it tends to, it takes a bit more effort to do. Um, it ends up with a very good result. Needs It's cut through there, so they, they drill a hole, they cut the rifling in, so cut out the gaps in between the rifling, um, or between the lands, um, and then they have to polish it. It means it's done with the machine, so you get gain twist barrels, all that sort of stuff are going to be in your cut rifling side of things because of the way that works. Um, very good barrels, lots of match barrels, um, but so are the button rifling. Button rifling works differently. They start with a hole, it's very, very similar starting point, and then they push a mandrel through. So they actually push this button, it's actually a, 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 a um, tungsten steel, I think, and it, with the set of the, th of the rifling on there, and they push it through. So it pushes the other metal out of the road as it pushes through. Doesn't need lapping as much. Generally, they are lapped and finished with that, but it's a very smooth, hard surface. Does a bit of stressing inside the barrel when it does that. Um, with that, it um, needs to be, well, I suppose it needs to be de-stressed, so they heat it up and de-stress and that sort of stuff, but a very good way to do things. And once again, lots of match barrels in that place. Both the cut and the button rifling are what your custom barrel makers will tend to be using because it's, that's the way it's set up. And I suppose it's because hammer forged rifling, which is more commonly found on factory barrels and that side of things, it is the cheapest way to do rifling, but it is the most expensive way to set up. So great big presses, hammer forging for those that aren't aware of how it works. You start once again with a piece of steel with a very accurately drilled hole through the middle of it, but that piece of steel in, in hammer forge situation is a lot shorter piece of steel. It goes through the process of being squished out. So it actually goes through, it has a mandrel, once again with a set thread on it, has a mandrel in the middle. And then it basically squeezes the barrel down and it squeezes it out into a longer with the profile and everything gets squeezed on it. Now those hammers, there's great big, there's actually opposing hammers that are smashing away millions of hits in doing it. Big, like I said, expensive machine to do that process. Ends up with a work hardened barrel in through that process. So some logic that it's gonna last longer. I've never really seen that case, but there is some logic to go with the fact that because it's hammer forged, it's gonna to be tougher. Um, there's also some logic to say there's going to be more stress in the barrel, so it potentially is going to do different things when it warms up because of the stress of the barrel. Even when they try and de-stress it, it's been squeezed into that place rather than a billet that's had either very little stress or no stress put into it. So it tends to be, um, there will people say it'll last longer but they are less accurate. I've found them all to be very accurate. The, the, the hammer forged one, like I said, is more in a factory rifle. You're not going to tend to find it a match grade side of things. A little bit to do with that stress side of things, but actually to do with the tooling it takes to set up to do it. So, but I would come back to good barrel. They're good barrels and they all do a good job. You'll tend to get um, your better quality in your match grade stuff, of course. Heavier barrels tend to behave better for the extreme precision, but it's like I said, it's not something to fuss over. 
barrel profile, barrel twist, barrel length, those are, th those are details to fuss on what suits you. Um, as for particular rifling, as for a particular way it's done, it's not something to fuss over generally. I've found all the good manufacturers to work really well, and I haven't tested all of them, but I've tested lots of them, um, and I've never, it's never been something I've fussed about. So that's my take on it. The, the simple bit is nothing wrong with 5R, and I don't want to say they're bad at all, but there's nothing extra right with them either. There's nothing extra special with them. It's not something to fuss over. If you like it, awesome, but don't go and um, you know hold off for a barrel maker to use 5R because you need 5R. Ah, listen, go with what they're using. It's going to work fine. Anyway, guys, that's my quick one. I don't know how quick that was, but anyway, that's, that's the, the video I've got on 5R rifling and rifling and barrels in general. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you next time.